All right, good morning, everybody, and how are you doing? Okay, focus, focus, all right. Anyways, good morning everybody, and how are you doing today? Hey, how you doing, Fernando? How you doing? Why is he filming? Well, today's gonna be a special show. We had an idea that you guys might wanna know what it's like to actually film a YouTube show. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, you just see me doing this. Hi guys, how you doing? Some of you out there would like to see how it's done. So we thought today as we take some time and go through like the cameras we use, how we set it up, the materials we use to do it, so that you guys that might wanna start a YouTube channel or just make maybe an ad or something like that would have a good idea on how it's done. So let's get started. Wait a minute. So let's get started, shall we? Focus. So let's get started, shall we? So most of the time the show starts off with me talking to you guys on this camera here. This is a Canon, hold on. This camera here sitting on a Joby mount is a Canon GX7. This is what we use for all of our hey look at me shots. The reason why we use it is it has this cool flip up screen here. It can flip back, it can flip up. The only downside to this camera is that there's no way to put a microphone in it. But the microphone is located here on the top, so when I'm talking at it, the screen actually reflects the sound into the microphone. When I flip the screen down, there is an audio difference, but it's not that bad. Now we use several other cameras to do this install too, depending on where we're at in the car. But before we talk about more cameras, let's talk about the actual equipment that we use. Now, as I said, we use the Joby mounts. That's these guys right here. They're called Gorilla Pods, and we have them in various shapes and sizes. Let me show you our rack. I'm sure you've seen it in the video before. So over here on the rack, we have a couple different ones. This guy here, we have two or three of these this one with the red tips these have magnets on them. these are really cool so what we can do with this one is let's say you want to see Fernando taking this door panel off we can stick this guy just like this he can mount his GoPro here to get a great angle of what's going on in the door now we also have three standard tripods depending on what's going on this one is our most popular because it's red this one is some cool carbon fiber uh, you know whatever and then this is a shorty this is if we need to do something where it's just setting up on the table or in the back seat of a car they get abused so if we want to set something up like this now the other thing too is these heads we use them on everything we don't use a standard gopro mount we've put these here on all our things and basically it's, it's got these two little v cuts in it and these lock in either this way or you can flip it around and go this way but we put that on all the mounts this one's nice because this is a thinner version of the mount but all the cameras have it so one of the times we might actually use a tripod did you hear that that noise that's not ours let me show you. this is something that drives me crazy in the videos hang on so we have a barber shop next to us and they keep their air compressor right there. So when we're filming, it always has a habit of just going off and off and off. The other thing that we have located right on the other side of this is a fire department. So you guys have heard sirens and stuff like that in the videos before, that's why. Now when Fernando's getting ready to do a backup cam installation, he'll go ahead and grab a tripod, the red one, and set up his GoPro, get his angles all set, and then he tapes up the license plate. Now a lot of you guys have commented on why not just get a sticker to put over the license plate? We actually did. We have a sign shop right next door. We had him make us a magnet, we had him give us some vinyl sticky stuff, and at the end of the day, the vinyl sticky stuff just didn't last long enough, and the magnet, it didn't stick, so blue tape it is. I know, oh well. So what he'll do is he'll go ahead and set up his camera over here, and then he'll film himself either time lapse or regular depending on you know what I tell him to do or what we're trying to get for that video and we'll add that in and then of course he'll move the camera along the installation route either use this guy here or he'll switch over to his little roller guy there and move it throughout the car now as far as other cameras obviously some hero 5 the GoPros are indispensable these guys they do everything anytime you see a time lapse we record it on a GoPro GoPros do the best time lapse because the time lapse is infinitely adjustable we set them for the longest period meaning they take the most amount of pictures that way we can speed them up or slow them down if we need to we never slow them down we always speed them up but there's data there to do it with we also have one of these this is a little gopro session i don't recommend these these things they're, they suck. I mean, I'll be honest, they suck. The last time we used one of these was for the video you guys hated the most, which was where we shot that Corvette time lapse. We just put one of these, plugged it in the wall, set it up on a tripod in the corner of the bay, and we moved it around. That's all they're good for. That's it, nothing else. Now, the other thing that's important when shooting these videos is trying to come up with new angles, right, Fernando? Correct. 
you know, a lot of the times it gets kind of boring. You know, I mean, how many door panels can you watch us take off? Yeah. A lot, right? So we want to come up with new angles. That's why having all these different tripods allow us to do that. Oh, we have one I didn't show you. This one right here, this is also a Joby. Now what this does is this sticks to a window, you turn the dial, and it'll lock it in place. So now we can mount a camera on the window and film from that angle. When you're done, pop it, pull the little tab, and it comes right off. We have a couple different versions of these so we can do multiples. Now this one, this, this has a standard GoPro mount in it. This is great for if you have to do anything that's moving. We used to do some filming, like we drive into the install bay. <laughs> Also, I took this to Hawaii to do that video. If you guys haven't checked, it's like 20 or 22 in the install diaries. It's my vacation in Hawaii. Good video, check it out. Anyway, this is great for sticking to the window. And then this thing is cool. This is called the pod, all right? This is a, just a bean bag with the camera mount on the top of it. So you spin the little thing on and then you can just sit it anywhere. We use this a lot of the times, like when we're getting the, the view of us sitting from the in the front seats, we'll stick this up on the dash kind of hammer it down in place and it'll stay. So having a bunch of different gizmos and widgets and mounts for these cameras allow us to come up with different angles. This is one of my favorite. So what this allows us to do is we can put this up underneath a car. It's got four rollerblade wheels on it. Honestly, I just bought it because it looked cool. Slides right underneath. It's good for when he's doing backup cameras. We'll put the camera on there, aim it up, and then as he's rolling around in his little slider, that cool thing right there, he'll just roll that thing with him as he moves through the underneath of the car. That's for neat shots. Now, when we first had the idea to do the install diaries, it really wasn't the install diaries. It falls back to when we started doing install stuff, just tips from the install bay. We bought this guy here. This is called a GIF. It's got a giant ring light on it. It moves up and down. And what that allows us to do, we thought, would be to like roll it into a car, turn the light on. Got a 1080 monitor on it. So, and then all, of course, this bag of wires this is for the charging and, and to get the light to work. And we can extend this pull out. We use it a lot now when we're doing like stuff on the workbench where we need to have like a forward angle and a top down angle. Works really well. The camera we use on it is this one. This is a Canon SL1. The reason why we have the Canon SL1 is for two reasons. One, it was the smallest DSLR of its time. Look how, look at this, just fits in the palm of your hand. This thing is great, very tiny. The downside to it is the screen. The screen just, it doesn't flip out or anything like that. They have an SL2 now where the screen flips out. So I believe Jason from Stereo Kings and also James at Car Audio, etc. they've both moved on to SL2s and that's what they use now. Put a microphone here, this thing shoots at 1080 of course. It's not a 4K, but it's YouTube, so you're good. And it's interchangeable lenses. So we have a couple different lenses that we put on this. It mounts up on top of that guy. Really nice microphone and adds a really nice white light. Now, another real popular angle is this guy right here. This angle here that you're looking at, we shoot with a drop down rig that we made above my workbench. It has a spot for a microphone and then the camera mounts here. Now, the cool thing about this rig, it's got a pin here that we can pull and we can bring it down or we can push it all the way up into the ceiling to get it up out of the way. And then the pin goes in and locks it in place. As you'll notice, it's also got a track on the ceiling. That's so that the camera can move back this way or come forward this way. Now we made this rig out of Citra. And of course we had to paint the ceiling black because what we found out, as you can see here, is that this white was reflecting down on the radios. Now this angle we use a lot in the videos and that's why we built this. As you see, for example, hey, today we're gonna go with an 8201. Let's go ahead and unbox this, get it out. Now the nice thing about the 8201 is it comes with a backup camera. So inside the box, so as you can see, this was a helpful mount that we made for filming these things. Plus it's a nice conversation piece. A lot of people come in the door and they're like, hey man, What's that from the ceiling? Is that what, what, what is it? Do you guys, do you guys do porn? The second most talked about thing is definitely the jib in the back. We used to have that over here. You guys have seen that before Fernando moved his workbench over here. It would sit right here next to my workbench and people would always come in and go, Is that carbon fiber? Oh my gosh. Fernando, is that carbon fiber? Yes. That must have been expensive. Yes, it is. It was. Now. Let's take a quick pause here and let's take a history lesson on the show itself. Not everything is filmed here in the install bay. When we do the radio unboxings, we go over to the store and film it there. We also film one of the live shows there. When we do an unboxing, we use the ADDs. So 
this one that we have mounted here we take down and also we have a second ADD now for these when we're shooting over there we put L glass on it cannons higher in glass and we manually focus them on us they don't need to autofocus or anything like that this uses the 17 to 40 f4 that Canon makes and then for the close-up shot we switch out from this guy here to this guy here this is the 24 to 105 f4 and that allows us to switch between those for microphones we use road mics we have a couple different ones and we use those as you can see road mic here this is the drawer of microphones mic we bought a bunch of other microphones to test out these were cheap these were like between 25 to 50 bucks a piece and i gotta be honest with you i should have sent them all back because they're pretty much all crap if you're looking for an inexpensive mic this guy right here the little road this guy's awesome we bought this because we're going to start using the gopro audio here you have to, to hook up a microphone to a gopro you got to buy this 50 dollars adapter it's highway robbery we're going to make a mount for that we haven't done it yet when gopros are mounted to something if you bump them or anything like that it just sounds like a jackhammer going off so what we want to do is separate the mic from the camera now next to the drop down camera mount here our second most popular angle that we get a lot of is probably this one here this is the dash gopro mount that we typically do we have these cool light bars and we take a joby wrap it around the light bar we attach a gopro here and then we aim it at the radio that we're working on now this mount allows us to do a lot of things we can turn the mount towards the door panel slide it down the light bar and get him taking the door panel off we can turn it around the other way and if we're putting amps on a rear firewall we can do that because we use multiple lights in the car typically so we'll have one up front one in the rear and the Joby's wrap around really tight because this is all soft rubber here so it grips the light really well this is one of the reasons why we want to switch to the external microphone though because when you hit this it sounds like a jackhammer in the camera and then I have to edit that piece of footage out. So hopefully when we switch to the external microphone, we won't have that problem too much anymore. Now, obviously I'm not the only one here that does work from their workbench. I mean, even though the rig is above mine, the reason why we put that rig above mine is because we use it for multiple things, other shows, not just the install diaries. So Fernando needs a way to do his above his workbench. So for that, we found this rig here. Essentially, it's this giant long arm that comes down and has a clip made to hold a cell phone. However, it works really great for a GoPro. And from there, you can see you get a really nice view of what he's doing on his workbench. For the most part, we're not talking that much unless we're showing you something. And if we are, we'll just do it on mine where there's the, the microphone. So all we need is the ability to put a camera there. Now, for those of you looking to get started and actually doing something like this, you don't need all this crazy gear at the end of the day you just need a phone with a camera which conveniently enough most phones have nowadays and the reason why i say that if you go back and watch the first 10 or 12 episodes of installed diaries it was actually called the vlog because we thought we'd just do daily vlogging and for that just to test we use the phone because making the investment and in all this other stuff yeah it's not cheap so we wanted to make sure it was actually something that would be a show you guys would want to watch now we do beta shows and you guys tell us back then we had a much much smaller audience we didn't know if something was going to work or not and putting all the money into it just you know speaking of that when we first started filming the unboxings we used the canon g9 which doesn't shoot in widescreen 1080 there again we didn't know if it was going to take off so we didn't want to go crazy and i had a g9 at home so we brought that in and that's what we used then we switched to using the sl1 and i had a canon 7d and we used those two cameras now since we're talking about the phone the phone for for a long time actually played a big role in what we do for the first year when we did car audio talk with dean and fernando the facebook live show we actually filmed that on my old 7 this one right here and the reason why we use this is because it had an eighth inch headphone jack so we could run a microphone into this and then we could hdmi out to our screen and we had this rig that we kind of cobbled together so that we could record it and release it the next day as a youtube you know replay of it yes i'm a star wars fan of boba fett and then when we started doing youtube live we do the same thing so this phone was getting used for sure and that's when we were having a lot of internet issues the internet was kind of slow we switched to this phone for doing the YouTube because we were doing the YouTube here and we had no Wi-Fi in the install bay I know it's 2018 and we had no Wi-Fi in the install bay 
whatever. Anyways, we've switched and we don't use these anymore for the show. We have a new way of doing things. So for the live shows, we've switched to this rig here. It has a Rode microphone attached to it as well as a Canon HFR800. This is just an old school camcorder that, that records at 1080 and HD. We can flip the screen around right here and we can, you know, see what's going on. We put an SD card in it so we can record the show now. That's not the only way we record the show. This is half of it. This is this is what we're using to do live. Obviously, this doesn't connect to the internet though, so we need a way to do that. For doing that, we switch to this right here. We just made a basic layout for it. It's way too big. We need to shrink it up and come out with a version two. But for right now, what we're using is this. This is a Webcaster X2. What's cool about this is it does two things. It connects to YouTube and it connects to Facebook to allow you to do video. And that's it. This box right here, this is a DVR. So when we're doing the Monday night show on Facebook, it comes out of here, goes into here and records the actual background and the scrolling text and all that. And then the SD card that's in the camera, we actually superimpose onto it because the audio that comes out of this is just terrible and we can't use it. It has a keyboard so that we can type in the headers for the show. And then while the show is actually on, it plays on this guy right here. We have this TV that we take over next door or for YouTube, we bring down and set on the bench or move around the store or wherever we need it. So along with Fernando reading the questions on the phone, I can kind of monitor the quick ones that pop up. That's why we can always do like shout outs like, Hey, from Dallas, New Orleans, and Norway, and the UK, and Australia, and every other place on the planet that sometimes we have to look up on the map. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and telling us where you're watching from. Now, the one thing we haven't talked about is what we do with it after we film all this stuff. For that, we use a MacBook Pro to do editing, and we store everything on one of these Lesse rugged hard drives. These guys here is with the rubber boot. We have two of them. This one is for 2018, and then the 2017's at home. When I get home, I import them into whatever I'm working on that night. I like to put stickers on my laptop. It makes it feel special. And then for software right now, we're just using iMovie. Use what works. We don't need anything complicated. These shows, you know, these, these aren't motion pictures. We're not making Star Wars every week. So the struggle with this is, is trying to come out with new ways to, to film the show better mounts, new tools, and we're always looking. Is there a better camera we could be using? And in this case, sometimes there is. Should we switch to 4K? And the answer to that is no, we're not switching to 4K. It's not gonna happen anytime soon. We will when the time is right, but right now, no. So just, just don't even respond to that. But we do have a new toy we're gonna start playing with, which is this guy right here. This is the Canon EOS M100. The idea behind this is to replace the GX7. We love the GX7 and we're still gonna be using it for footage. We're actually you're going to come out with some new mounts where we actually mount the GX7 and the GoPro next to one another so that we can do like better audio when Fernando's talking. Also be able to switch from the same camera angle from time lapse to actual talking about things on the fly. As you know, I don't sleep much, so these are ideas I'm coming up with. We figure with the new M100, that's gonna switch to this angle. And the nice thing about this is this actually has a wider view. It's an EOS, which means we can take the lenses off. So like this one, for those of you camera nerds out there, this guy here has a 15 to 45 millimeter lens, which is wider than this. This is only like 20 something, 24 maybe. Plus they make interchangeable lenses for it. They make a 10, which we're gonna get so we can go super wide. So you don't have to be like, hey, Hey guys, how's it going today? So we'll be able to switch and on the fly, I can just come up and I can turn the dial and zoom in and zoom out, which these clickety clicks would do, but it doesn't really slow. Like I'm trying to zoom in and it's taking forever. So it will be nice to be able to do that on the fly when we need to, to zoom in and out. What's your favorite camera? Um, Probably the G7. You like the G7? Yeah. yeah. I mean... And, and the idea of replacing it really, it was, it was torture and you tortured me to buy it. <laughs> Nothing like the two of us standing in Best Buy for 20 minutes doing this. What angle can we use it for? <laughs> well, okay, so if we move this there, move, yeah, it was funny. All right, so if you want to start a YouTube channel, start with your phone. Keep it simple. You don't need to go crazy or anything like that. All these tools are nice, but they're just tools. All right, guys, well, we hope this gives you a nice behind the scene look at how we film these shows that you guys love watching, and we're very thankful that you do because it's allowed us to buy more cool tools to make more cool videos for you guys to watch. It's like the circle of life. All right, guys, as always, have a great night. We'll see you later next time. On to the next one. Bye.